Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Thy foot to Can you hear me? What? The Lord which keepeth thee, he will testing, not testing. slumber nor sleep. Oh, testing, testing.
Amen, amen, amen. My help cometh from, my help cometh from the Lord. Blessing, my Lord. brethren, blessing to every one of you. Amen. Greetings and blessings in the name of Jesus, our soon coming King. Hallelujah. Thank God today for all the, my friends on the teleconference. We give you thank God for thanks for you. And we are here to just lift up and praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I went to church today. We had a lovely time in the house of the Lord. And we prayed and rejoiced and sing praises to the Most High. Because His name is excellent. He alone is excellent. So before we go any further, I'm going to pray. Ask God to take charge of this teleconference service, ask God to lead and direct us, ask God to give us a, sp a spirit of understanding and a spirit of, God bless you sis, God bless you, ask God to lead and direct us, I'm just going to open with prayer right now in Jesus name, amen, Father in the name of Jesus we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify your name. Your name which is above every name. Hallelujah. We lift you up, Lord, because you're worthy of our praises. And we thank you for your love and your mercies towards us. Lord, your love towards us is beyond words, is beyond measure. Oh God, but we thank you, Lord God, that you've looked down upon us and in mercy and, and in truth. And you've made a sacrifice to redeem us from sin and from hell. Lord, bless us and keep us, guide and protect us. We give you thanks, we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. God bless you, brethren. Um, there is some, some one is played, making a little noise in the background. We would ask you um, if you can, some paperwork I think is going on, someone moving, shuffling around here. I would ask you to just give us, help us and you know, thank you very much. God bless you. So we are here today to give God thanks and to give God praise. I, I feel blessed. I feel blessed. I am blessed. Every day of my life I am blessed. When I wake up in the morning and when I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. But you know, um, you just want to say that, you know, the Lord is good all the time. You know, Amen. He's good all the time. All the time, our God is good. Amen. And, you know, I, I think about what the Lord has done for me. And I'm truly glad that I gave my life to Jesus all these years. And I've proven that He never fails. If you trust Him... If you believe Him, if you lean upon Him, if you stand upon His Word, He never fails. God is, God can do the impossible. Things that we think that is impossible. You know, we had Sunday school today and um, a pastor was talking about, you know, the, the, the covenant that Jesus made to save us. You know, and the Passover, when the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, that God divided the waters, the Red Sea, because they were trapped. But God is a way maker, and He divided, He told Moses, stretch forth your hand across the sea. And Moses stretched forth his rod across the sea. And they went over on dry land. And when fear of men came chasing after them, the waters come together and they were drowned in the Red Sea. So God will do the same for us, brethren. God will deliver us. God will make a way for us where there's no way. And God will also destroy our enemy. Hallelujah. Right in front of our eyes. And we see how Miriam, Moses' sister, took out the timbrel and began to sing and shout and praise God. 
When God do something for us, we should praise Him. When God do something for us, we should lift Him up. When God do something for us, we should glorify Him. He deserves the praises. So we were about the Passover. So when the children of Israel went over, and this was to be a memorial that they would recommend, they would memorize and um, have the Passover as a memory of how God delivered them over from the hands of the Egyptian, and it has been a continuous celebration of the Passover, and Jesus has now done it for us because the same way that Moses stretched forth his rod across the sea, Jesus has done it. He has opened the way for us where there was no way, where sin had us trapped on every side. We were trapped. There was no way we could escape. But Jesus came and by his blood, he opened that Red Sea of Sin, divide it, and we come across, because of repentance, we are on standing on over in Jordan land, over in glory land. Spiritually, we are standing in glory land. Praise the Lord. So, um, before further to do, I'm just going to read some scripture, and then we just talk about, we just want to talk about the time that we're living in now. The time that we're living in. You know, we're living in some serious times and I think we should all realize that things is not the way it was. And we should also realize that it is not going to go back to the way it was. Because the Word of God prophesied through the prophets told us what these things would come to pass. And even Jesus himself warned us of troubled times that will come. You know, I'm, I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 24. And listen, listen what it says here in Matthew 24 and verse 3. The Word of God tells us that um, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciple came unto him privately to saying, Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Tell us. I mean, Jesus was forewarning them that these, these days would come. That the Son of Man would die and be resurrected and ascended to, to the Father. And then he will come again. So he has died, resurrected, ascended on high, seated on the right hand of God, and he said, there he will come again. So when he told the disciples, and they came to him privately, tell us, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the signs of thy coming? So the, the disciples wanted to know, how are we going to know when the end is. How will we know? How will we understand? So, he said unto them, Firstly, take heed that no man deceive you. So deception was the first thing that Jesus warned his disciples of. Deception. Take heed. So, when we see what's going on today, we have to take heed and be sure that we are standing on solid ground. We have to be sure that we are standing on the Word of God. We have to be sure that we are standing on His promises. We have to be sure that we are standing in the doctrine. We have to be sure that we are standing where God wants us to be in His Word that we are living and moving in His Word, that we are not living, walking in the flesh to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but we have to live in the Spirit. How do we live in the Spirit? We keep close to God, we pray, we seek His face, we live in His Word, we grow in grace. 
There are some interference. Could you please, um, 874, whose number is 874? Could you please not talk in the background, please? Number 874. I'm not sure whose number that is. It's a bit disturbing. Praise God. So he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many, now listen to this, many shall come in my name. This is what Jesus says saying that I am Christ and shall deceive many. Many shall come in my name. So if we realize that in the last days, many people will claim to be Christ. They will claim to be following Christ. They will claim to be serving Christ. And it says they will deceive many. We can't be a play at a place where we can be easily deceived. If we stay in the word of God, we will not be deceived because deception is a great sin. If we, we are deceived when we lose our sense of value and our sense of understanding of the word of God. We, we are deceived when we lost vision of what God wants us to be and what God wants of us. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in thy name, my name, saying that I am Christ. And you know, I was thinking, hearing about this um, evangelist in the, um, in the, um, Nigeria named T. T. B. Jashma, who has suddenly died. He was supposed to be a prophet, but at the age of fifty-seven, he suddenly died. So, and now they're saying that he was a false prophet. So. You know, we are to know that there are many, many false prophets, prophets out there. Many false prophets. But we are to know the true people of God. He said he, and then he went on to say he shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars. But he said, see that he be not troubled. And that's comforting. It's comforting to realize that whatever is going on around us, God's word is with us and God's word is there to comfort us. See that you are not troubled despite what is going on. We should not be troubled. We should not be fearful. We should not be doubtful. We are, we are to know that God, Jesus said this thing would happen over 2,000 years ago. What we've seen today is fulfillment of the word of God. And then Paul writing to Timothy, Paul writing to Timothy in um, 2 Timothy 2 and verse 1, he says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasted, boasters, proud, blaspheme, blasphemers, disobedient to parents and thankful unholy are we seeing this now in these days and even when i was growing up when i was a, a child growing up a young man growing up i never see so much of perilous times but we are seeing perilous times now i have not seen i, I as a as a young man growing up i've never seen so much people who are lovers of themselves boasters Covetous. I've never seen so much covetousness. I've never seen so much pride in people. So in a short space of my lifespan, I've seen a build up of these characteristics, which is evil, growing. Even now, look where we are. We're in London. Look what's going on in London. Look how many people are there out there carrying knives and all sorts of weapons. Perilous times. Yeah. yeah, disobedient. Mm -hmm. They're unthankful. Mm -hmm. Some some of these some of these children going up sad to say they they have no respect. They have no respect for their parents. They're disobedient mm -hmm. to their parents. And no matter what their parents do, they're unthankful. So we have seen in our lifespan, those of you who have been around a little while like I have, we have seen a change of characteristic we have seen a change of mannerism 
you know, you know, when I, I, when I was young, we were taught to respect elder people. My, my whole, my family, we all taught to show respect to elder people. If somebody's older than you, then we, we automatically, automatically show respect for them. That's how we grew up. Now it doesn't matter what age you are. A child will not show you respect. This this generation. So what generation are we in? Men shall be lovers of themselves. That's what Paul told Timothy. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Natural affection. Natural affection. Natural affection is kindness. Is peace. Is love. Is showing um, empathy is showing concern is showing kindness so now we are living in a time when man has no natural affection and they're truth, truth breakers false accusers incontinence incontinent and fierce and despisers of those that are good so we are living a time now, brethren, that, and this is telling us that it's time for us to hold on to Jesus. It's time for us to cleave even closer to him. It's time for us to look up and think about our home because we are not, this is not our home. And we can't make plans for years to come because we don't know when Jesus is going to come. Because the signs are here showing us that is coming soon. When we see what is going on, even in this country, it's like no one is safe. No one is safe. There's no way in the world you go that there isn't trouble. There's trouble everywhere. But we have Jesus, and He warned us of this, what we are seeing today. So Paul went on writing to Timothy, they're having a form of godliness. So people talk about God. Yes, I believe God. Yes, I trust God. Yes, uh, I believe I trust God. But they deny the power thereof. They deny that God delivers, that God heals, that God is the answer. And what we have to know is God, has, God is the answer. This is one song that says, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Without Jesus, there's no answer. Because we can't trust what is going on around us. We have to trust in the word of God. So it says, went on, Peter, when um, Paul went on writing to Timothy, for this sort are they which creep into houses, led captive silly women laden with divers of lust ever learning, never coming to the knowledge of truth, ever learning, never learning, ever learning, but not coming to the knowledge of truth. The knowledge of truth is to know who Jesus is. The knowledge of truth is to realize that Jesus died to save this sinful world. And without the death and burial, the death of Jesus, without his blood, we would not have a hope. We would not have salvation. That is the truth. The truth is that God came down, dwell among men, put on a fleshly garment, dwell among us, taught his disciples how to live, taught his disciples how to conduct themselves. And those words of the apostles and though they became apostles, many of them died for their faith. So the gospel is the coming, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. And it went on to say about when Janice and Jambres withstood Moses. So we know that Moses went before Pharaoh and Moses cast down his word. And we cast on his rod, and his rod became as a snake. And we see the soothsayer, the magician, 
Janis and Jambis cast down their rods and their rods became snakes. But we see that the rod of Moses swallowed up the rod of Janis and Jambis, those musicians, before Pharaoh, showing that God is ever more powerful. God is ever more great. God is more dominion. God has more power. And in everything we have to acknowledge that we can't deny the power of God because God is all powerful. When Jesus died and he resurrected, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power. Jesus had all power has all has got all power. And so we can rely on him. In any situation we find ourselves in, we can rely on him. And in Thessalonians, Paul writes, in Thessalonians, first Thessalonians five, Paul writes. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I should write unto you. He was writing to Thessalonian to say what will happen in the end time, the times that we will see, that we will witness. And imagine that we ourselves are witnessing to those things that Jesus spoke of, those things that Amen. the apostles spoke of. Imagine that we are witnesses witnessing the fulfillment of those prophecies. Imagine how blessed we are because we can see those things manifesting right in front of our eyes. But of the times and the seasons, Paul wrote to Thessalonians, Brethren, you have no need that I should write unto you. For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So no man knows the day nor the hour. But we are to look for him. We are to live and walk in his word. Walk in his light. Walk in his truth. Walk in his peace. Walk in his grace. We are to show love one for another. We have to bear the, the fruits of the spirit. And how we know that we belong to Jesus is when we bear the fruits of the Spirit. And we know the fruits of the Spirit. Of love, peace, joy, long-suffering, patience, kindness. So we look in ourselves and ask ourselves, have we got the fruits? Are we bearing those fruits? Are we bearing the fruits of love? Are we bearing the fruits of, of, of kindness? Are we bearing the fruits of grace? Are we bearing the fruits of joy? Are we bearing the fruits of long-suffering and patience and all those fruits? Are we bearing those fruits? Because as children of God, those fruits, we are to be bearing fruits. As children of God. You know perfectly, the Lord is coming as a thief in the night. Sometimes people say, and because I say, from our father fell asleep, we have been saying Jesus is coming soon. But this is why Paul said to Timothy, preach the word in season, out of season. And whether they hear or they forbear, preach the word, tell them, tell them Jesus is coming soon. Keep your eyes on God. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Because it says on here, Thessalonians chapter 3, chapter 5, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Never was as children of God be too comfortable in this world. That's right. Never we as children of God be too settled in this world. This is not our home. When never, feel, never we feel everything is okay, everything is fine. I'm all right. You know, I think about the rich man, the, the, the man who uh, have his barn and um, his crop increase. And his crop, his crop increase and his crops, so much came out of his crop that he says, Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to break down these barns and I'm going to build up bigger barns. Hallelujah. And he built, break down and build up bigger barns. And he filled his barns with all his goods. 
And he said to himself, Now, soul, take thy ease. We can't be like that man. We can't say, Take thine ease. Because the Bible says that God said, Today I will require your soul. And whose those things shall be. So we can't build up treasures, brethren. We can't build up treasures on earth. We are to build our treasures in heaven. Because the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So we build up our treasures in heaven. Not on earth. There's nothing down here for us. And the Bible says the whole world shall be destroyed. God destroyed it, the, the earth with the flood. God destroyed the earth in the flood. Because the Bible says in Genesis, um, in Genesis 6, it says that it came to pass. Uh, listen to this now. It came to pass when the men when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, the daughters of men, the daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fear and took unto them wives mm -hmm. of all they choose. So the sons of the sons of God were angels and they were fallen angels that God cast out of heaven and they saw the daughters of men that they were fear and they took unto them wives and this was evil in the sight of God it should not be because angels are not too supposed to uh, mingle with men but that's what happened and it says the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men because they are also flesh. And yet the days shall be 120 years. And they were giants. So, because of this union, which was not right, the sons of God and the children, the daughters of men, which was not right in the sight of God, we see it brought down sin upon the earth and great sin and he says there were giants in and the earth in those days so that those in the union which was not right produced giants and after that when the sons of god came in unto the daughters of men they bare children unto them the same became mighty men which was of old men of renown and God saw that the wickedness of men. You see, once we go out of the will of God and started to do, and man started to do things which is unnatural, that it will bring wickedness. And this is how wickedness um, multiplied upon the earth in the days of Noah. This is how wickedness, because things that are are not natural become become natural to man. And God said, and God saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth, and that every imagination and thought of his heart was evil, evil, continuous. So when 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 we move away from the will of God, wickedness steps in. And this is why God saw and God said. In verse Genesis 6, verse 6, is a very important, Jesus, God said, And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Brethren, sin and righteousness grieve God to his heart. Sin and righteousness grieve God to his heart. And this was what happened in the days of Noah. The wickedness was so great upon the earth that it grieved God. And it grieved him so much that he said he repented. He repented that he made man upon the earth. 
God's plan was great. God's plan was good. God wanted to establish a heaven and earth. God made man in righteousness, in holiness, in peace, in love, in joy, and gave the whole world, made, gave him dominion over the whole world, over the whole earth. Man had dominion over the fish in the sea and everything that creepeth upon the earth and those, everything that is in the sky, the fowl of the ear. Man had dominion. But because of sin, because of wickedness, we see what fall upon men. And it grieve God in his heart. Can you imagine? How it is to grieve God because of wickedness. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created. Uh, Genesis 6 verse 7. Created on the face of the earth, both man and beast, and creeping things and fowl of the air. For it, for it repented me that I have made him. But Noah found grace in the sight of God. Brethren, in a time we're in today, we have to make, make it sure that we find grace in the sight of God. We need to be like Noah because Noah was righteous. Noah was kept himself holy and clean. Noah did not mingle with sin and unrighteousness. Noah was spotless in the sight of God, pleasing in the sight of God, walking in the statutes of God, keeping the commandment of God, Amen. having the fear of God in him. And God saw it in Noah. And God need to look in us, brethren, and see that we, have, yeah. we are pleasing in his sight, that we have the fear of God that we have the love of God, that we have the peace Amen. of God, that we have the righteousness of God, that we are walking in His Word. Hallelujah. And because God saw this man Noah, that He was pleasing Him. For the generation of Noah, these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And now walk with God. You know, brethren, we want to walk with God. We want to walk with God. We want to talk with God. We want to see God as our friend. Noah was made a friend with God. Abraham was a friend of God. The patriots and the prophet. Isaac. Jacob. Joseph. All those men, they made a friend with God. Hallelujah. Amen. They were friends of God. Brethren, if we in this 21, 21st century, we can be and we have to be a friend of God. We have to stand upon the word of God. So Noah was a just man, a perfect man in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat son, Sam and Ham and Japheth. And the earth was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And that's what we have in now. That's what we see now. But God is looking for a Noah in us. The earth was full of violence. So every time God tried to clean the earth of violence and wickedness it comes back again it comes back again but because he's merciful because he's gracious because he's loving because he's kind because his love for us is beyond measure because for his love for us is the agape love So because of this, 
It was, the earth was corrupt. You look on the earth, it was corrupt. All flesh has corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is full of violence through them. God don't want a violent world. God never created a violent world. God, violence is of the devil. Wickedness is of the devil. Sorrows is of the devil. Pain is of the devil. Heartache. Evil. Seducers. Deceivers. It's all of the devil. The end of all flesh, God said, come before me, for the earth is full of violence. Can we imagine, I don't think we'll ever see in this world, a world free of violence, until the devil himself is chained and cast into the bottomless pit. Because while the devil is loose and roaring around as a, as a, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, we will not find peace in this earth until Jesus come and chain that demon, chain that devil, and cast him into the bottomless pit. So we'll not find peace in this earth. The only peace we'll find in this earth is in Jesus. And the earth is full, was full of violence through them. And behold, God said, I will destroy them. I will destroy them. So he said to Noah, because he can talk to Noah, you see, the only way God talks to us is if we're living to please him, if we're serving him, if we're walking in his word, if we're serving him, he'll talk to us. He found that he could talk to Noah. He couldn't talk to anyone else because it was all together corrupt. And he said to Noah, make me an ark of gopher wood. And room shall thou made in the ark, and pitch it within and without. Make sure it don't leak, because rain is going to fall. It's going to rain. But it won't be water this time, it will be fire. No more water, it will be fire. No. Brethren, fire. we talk about fire. the coming of the Lord, but brethren, we know we have to talk about it. Because we have to warn, warn, warn the people. We have to warn them that the coming of the Lord is near. We have to warn yeah. them. The Bible says, if the watchman see the sword come in and do not warn the people, the sword, the, 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 the sword will be on his head. We have to talk it. We have to speak it. If they want to hear or whether they forbear. But, but we have to say Jesus is coming back. And we have to be prepared to meet him. That's right, hallelujah. We have to prepare to meet him. We have to Amen. prepare ourselves. We have to walk with him. We have to be in him. And he's got to be in us. Amen. It works two ways. We have to be in God. We have to be in Jesus. Jesus has to be in us. And when Jesus comes in us, he is the light. He, he illuminates us. When Jesus enters into us, He illuminates us. Amen. We're not in darkness, but Amen. we're in the light. Amen. Um, praise the Lord. So, um, in Daniel, in Daniel chapter two and verse forty, I want to read something here in Daniel chapter two and verse forty to forty. Daniel chapter two, verse forty to 43 um, I want to read something here Daniel chapter uh, Daniel Daniel chapter 2 and in verse 40 it says verse 40 it says for the fourth king no what happened in Daniel Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had a dream and he saw a dream of an image that was mixed with clay and iron. And he couldn't 
interpret the dream and none of his soothsayers or his sorcerers or anyone could interpret the dream but they found that Daniel had the Spirit of God excellent excellent Spirit of God my sister and could interpret the dream and this part where Daniel interpreted the dreams in Daniel 2 verse 40 he says for the fourth kingdom shall be strong for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdue all things as iron breaketh all these things and break in the pieces and bruise wherefore, wherefore thou sawest in, so it interpret Nebuchadnezzar dream thou sawest the feet and toes of potter's clay and part iron the kingdom shall be divided and there shall be it of its strength of iron so much as it is sawn the iron mixed with clay and the toes and the feet were part clay and part part iron and part clay so the kingdom was partly strong and partly broken whereof thou sawest iron mixed with clay that shall mingle themselves with the seeds of men so it was implicated that when the children of God when the sons of God saw the, the, the daughters of men and mingle it was not right in the sight of God it was like iron mixed with clay that is not pleasing that does not serve any purpose so the iron cannot cleave to clay. They are different materials. And they cleave and they shall not cleave to each other. So the whole thing is upset by this. And this is where sin comes in. And this is where sin grows and multiply. Because of what is not natural, the men make it natural. The sin, which is not natural so Daniel saw that Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of the iron mixed with clay which synonymously was like you know the children of God the sons of God and the and the daughters of men a kingdom that is divided cannot stand a kingdom that divided cannot stand and in Romans in Romans chapter 1, I just read a few verses from Romans chapter 1. It says, Now how wickedness multiply. It says, Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that they knew not God. Because they knew not God, they glorify him not as God, neither were they thankful. This is evil. This is this is evil, this is sin. Because they knew not God. When, when people don't know God and don't glorify God and they're unthankful, it says, and became vain in their imagination and their foolish heart were darkened. Their foolish heart were darkened. If we turn away from God, we are turning our hearts into darkness. We're turning our imagination into darkness. We're turning our aspiration into darkness. We're turning our life into darkness. Because God is light. And if we turn away from God, if we turn away from the light, we're turning away from darkness. If we turn away from Jesus, we're turning away from light. And we're turning to darkness. And darkness has a lot of repercussion professing their foolish heart were darkened professing themselves to be wise they become fools you so saw some people think they know everything they believe they know everything they understand everything but they deceive in themselves they're professing that they know things and they know nothing. The wisdom of man, the Bible says, is foolishness to God. So 
So when we when man think that they know everything, they know nothing. They don't know nothing until you know Jesus. That's why the Bible says, the, the psalmist says, the fool has said in his heart that there's no God. Anyone who say, it doesn't matter who they are, they could be the king, the queen, the president, the prime minister, if they say there's no God, they are fool, foolish. They are fools and they're foolish. Because, you know, the devil himself believed God. The Bible says the devil himself believe and tremble. So how can people professing themselves to be wise? They become fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man and the birds and the four-footed beasts and the creeping thing. They have changed the glory of them. When, when we think about, when we see what's happening in the world today, brethren, when we see brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, when we see what is happening in the world today, it is not God's will for people to suffer. God did not make man to suffer. God did not make man to be crying, dying in such a way, in such a form. God did not make us to be killing each other. God did not make us to be fighting. It is not God's will, but sin and the devil have caused corrupted, has corrupted, the, has Turn the glory of the uncorruptible God in the image made like corruptible man. So they're trying to think God or want us to believe that God is part of what we see. The killing, the fighting, the strife. God is perfect. God is righteous. God is holy. Amen. And wherefore the Bible says because of this, because they turn away from God, because they turn away from the precepts of God, because they turn away from the commandment of God, because they turn away from the will of God, because they turn away from the righteousness of God. In, in Romans chapter 1 verse 24, it says, wherefore God gave them up. God give them up to uncleanness. Let them go. This is what the Bible tells us. God let them go. Let them go. Give them their heart desire. Thank you. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You see... So, when we see what is happening today, my brothers and sisters, brethren, ladies and gentlemen, when we see what's happening today, mm -hmm. God has given them up. But you know, God has got a remnant. God has got a remnant. You know, when Elijah, when Elijah saw Jezebel and when Jezebel said he's going to kill Elijah, and Elijah ran away into the mountains, up into the rocks. And God met him. And God said to him, What doest thou here, Elijah? What doest thou here? Elijah said to God, They have slain all the prophets. And I'm the only one live. And they seeked me to slay me. They're listening all the prophet. God says, No, 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 no. Sometimes, you know, brethren, sometimes we feel we feel like we're left alone and we feel like um we feel like God is also we feel like it's all we alone serving God. I don't know, sometimes we feel so isolated. Sometimes we feel all by ourselves. Sometimes we don't find have anyone to pray with us. Sometimes we don't have anyone to encourage us. 
And sometimes we feel all by ourselves. By yourself. We feel isolated. We feel say, oh my God, it's only, it's only I alone. I it's only I alone worshiping God. It's only I alone praising God. It's only I alone praying. Sometimes we feel that way. And this is how Elijah felt. Elijah felt that it's only him alone, he alone was left because he said to God has slain all the prophets. And only I alone is left. But you know, God said, no, I have reserved 5,000, 5,000 who have not bowed, who have not bowed their knees. Oh, glory, hallelujah, praise the name of God, hallelujah, praise his name. I have reserved 5,000 who have not bowed their knees. Brethren, it's not us alone. And we who lifting up the gospel banner, it's not us alone. There are millions of people all over the world right now holding up the gospel banner saying that Jesus is coming back again. He is coming for his own, saying that this world will come to an end saying that Jesus yeah. will come to judge the world. There's not, we are not by ourselves. We are not alone. Never think that you are alone like Elijah. Yeah. God has reserved millions, millions all over the world who are lifting up the gospel banner, who are yeah. worshiping God, who are fearless, who are standing up yeah. and holding up the gospel banner. We are not alone. We are a mighty army. Yes. Hallelujah. We are a great army. Never be discouraged. Never be discouraged. Never be fearful. Because greater is he that is in you and I than them that is in the world. Greater is he. Stand up, my brethren. Proclaim the gospel. Jesus died to save this world. And the Bible says he is not willing. God is not slack concerning, concerning as men count slackness. So God is not slack. Whatever God said, that's what he will do. And this is why I love God. And this is why I love Jesus. Because I know whatever God said, that's what he will do. And I stand upon his promise. And we should stand upon his promise. And we should be fearless. We have to be fearless. Despite what is going on around us. God will not fail us. God will not fail his people. We have to walk with him. Talk with him. Trust him. Stand upon his promise. Stand upon his word. Wherefore, it says, God gave them up to uncleanness. Oh, my Lord. You know something? When God give up, when God give up anybody, when God give you, give you up, that's the worst thing you can think about. God give you up. You know, that means say God finish with you. That's what it means. That's what it means. God gave them up. And then they have, they said, they develop what they call a rep, reptobate mind. Reptobate mind. You see? When your mind is a reptobate, that, that's what happens when people turn away from God. God gives them up to a reptobate mind. You know, as a prime, a prime example of God giving up on people, as we see, God gave up on fear. Because God brought 10 plagues upon Egypt. 10 plagues. He had the plagues of the uh, darkness, the plagues of uh, the rivers turning into blood, the plagues of the frogs, the plagues of the lights, the plague, uh, all these plagues, the plagues of the killing of the firstborn. Imagine how merciful God is. How many plagues does Pharaoh need to have before he said, before he said, before he acknowledged God. And all the ten plagues that came upon Egypt, Pharaoh did not acknowledge God. 
And so God gave him up. The Bible says that God said he will harden the heart of Pharaoh. That is giving up. That is giving up on Pharaoh. Him harden his heart. God turned away from him. He hardened his heart. And so because his heart was hardened, there was no coming back for him. You see, God is loving, God is kind, God is... And, and, and you know something, when we think about how God was uh, patient with Pharaoh, when he brought all those plagues, he didn't have to do that. He couldn't have to do that. But it shows that God is patient with us. And God is long suffering. The long suffering is fruit of the Spirit. And God had long suffered with Pharaoh. And He long suffered with this earth. But the time will come when God will have to stop this. This won't continue forever. What we see going on today, our brethren, my brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, what we see going on today will not continue forever. Not at all. It will not continue forever. Oh, it must have an end. It was 21, one, uh, 120 years that Noah preached. Mm -hmm. 120 years saying, repent. Repent. Because rain is going to fall. Mm -hmm. Repent. Repent for rain is going to fall. And they mocked him. And they jeered him. They were saying one to another, What is this man doing building an ark? Where did this man get where where the water going to come from? So now we say to people, Jesus is coming back. Oh my Lord. They're asking the same thing. How, how is he gonna come? He's gonna come. He's coming back. Oh, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. He went away. And you know something? You know something? I want to say this lastly. I am glad he's coming back again. I am glad he's coming back again. You know why? We want to clean, we want all the uncleanness, we want all the wickedness, we want all the yes. evil, we want the devil to be yes. chained and chucked and, and cast yes. into a bottomless yes. place. We want to see Jesus come in his power and his glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says, all eyes, every eye shall behold him. Whether you believe or you disbelieve. Every eye shall behold him. He shall descend from heaven. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Can you imagine the shout? The shout that the shout will reach east and west, north and south. Every corner of the equator. The shout. He shall descend from heaven with a shout with the sound of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up oh glory hallelujah praise God hallelujah hallelujah we shall be caught up brethren we shall be caught up we shall be caught up Oh, glory be to God. The word of God is sure. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He is coming back again. And it's our duty to tell men, men must repent. Repent, repent. Because when he comes, there is no repentance. There is no repentance in the grave. Hallelujah. There is no repentance in the grave. The dead cannot praise God. He is God of the living. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And the life. He that liveth and believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Children of God, we are immortal right now. 
We're not waiting for immortality. We have immortality in us because we come from God and God is immortal. God can never die. His kingdom is everlasting. His kingdom has no end. His kingdom has neither beginning nor end. What a blessed people we are. What a blessed people we are. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. We thank God for his promise to us. And we yes, are blessed. Lord. And we don't have to worry about what's going on down here. Because he said in his word, when you see these things, see that ye are not troubled. Yes. So with all this COVID that's going around, COVID-19, and all these things that's going on, and people are oh. locking down, and you know you have to do certain things before you can, if you have to have, COVID job or whatever. We don't, we don't worry about that. Not at all. We worry about Jesus. We don't worry about man. We worry about Jesus. We serve God. And God warn us. Be not thou troubled. When you see these things. For these things must come to pass. Oh praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless the Lord. We praise Him. We glorify Him. I feel so good to know God. I feel so good to know Jesus. I don't have to live a life of fear and doubt. I'm too blessed to be stressed. Hallelujah. I'm too blessed right now to be stressed. I'm not. Hallelujah. My God never disappointed. He doesn't disappoint us. Oh, praise His name. Hang on to him. Hold fast to him. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praises. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless his holy name. God bless you, my brethren. God bless you. We ask. God bless you. I'm going to ask um, Sister McLean. God bless you. Glad to have you with us. I'm going to ask you just to be a short prayer as I close out here. God bless you, my sisters. God bless you, everybody. Amen. Sister, I'll be up Amen. short prayer. I'm closing now, now, uh, my dear sister McLean. A short okay. prayer, and we close now. Okay, praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the His name. Blessed be the name of the Lord from everlasting to, to everlasting. Amen. Lord God. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy of every praise. You are worthy of every honor. Amen. We lift up thy holy name. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for your blessing on us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your servant. Oh, God, we praise your name. On your word. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God, for your favor on our life. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you, Lord, thank for you, keeping Lord. us. And help us, Lord, to keep in the bond of unity and peace. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to portray the love. Oh, glory to God, the denying fruit of the Spirit. Father, we thank you that you're a loving God. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for your forgiveness. And we thank you, Lord, that you went away and you're coming back again. Yes, my God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to keep ourselves, O oh God, pure and holy. For without holiness, no man shall see you. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the scriptures tonight. Lord, your word is a lump unto our feet. Yes, my and Lord. And thy word, if I hid it in my heart, that I will not sin against thee. Father, bless us tonight bless together. Bless us, Lord. As we all know God, Hallelujah. To you this evening, Lord. We come to you, Lord, because we know you are the blessing. Yeah. And you are the blessing. Yeah. And I'm surely I'm being blessed yeah. tonight by this word. Yeah. Lord God, we thank you tonight by your servant. We pray that you will continue to bless him. Continue to inspire him. Continue, yeah. Lord, Lord, to anoint his lips. Father, as we speak your word with clarity, with authority, with power, he will always, oh God, be on the mountain, talk for you on fire. Bless us together tonight, oh God, as we are about, oh God, to leave on this platform. We pray, God, that your blessing will be with us. Fill our hearts with joy and peace as we say thank you, Lord, for your blessings. 
on us. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you, my dear sister Thank McLean. You, God bless you. Let's just go. Brother Jackson, bless you, Mr. McLean. God bless you, my darling. Amen. And bless you, my brethren. Okay, Brother David, God bless you. Brother David, God bless you. Oh, that's okay. Understandable. Love you all. Love everyone. Love you too, my dear sister. Love you, my 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 sister.